Today I again have Evangelist Mike Kingsley in the radio studio with me. It has been a privilege and a pleasure working with Brother Mike in prayer and reconciliation over these past eight years. He is currently in Texas after spending the past three years in California. His main passion is prayer, and he is here today with a message that will positively affect all of us. Last week you were speaking out of Acts 17. Would you please give us a recap of that message from last week, Brother Mike? Thank you again for having me and just the opportunity to share God's message uh, to the people and God's people here in Texas. Uh, we had a great, wonderful time in looking in Acts 17, which is, uh, I think, I believe, one of the um, strategic passages that stands out to me in the life and mission of Paul. Mm -hmm. in his way of reaching the unreached for the kingdom of God. Yes. Even when the odds were against him, mm -hmm. when he couldn't, it was so hard for him to penetrate and, and go places. And, and, you know, it was tough times. But he had a way of, you know, you read through the book of Acts in the ministry of his life, you find that he goes to cities, some cities he's liked, some cities he's not liked, some cities they beat him up. And the guy doesn't stop, you know, doesn't stop going. He's mm, still right. going forward. And a lot of times we find in our day, we, you know, we find it difficult to continue. Mm -hmm, There's a place mm -hmm. in the life of ministry now from, you know, from a ministry point of view, when we're discouraged, we can't go forward for some reason. And yet this can be so very encouraging that ministry is not only easy. Sometimes it can be tough. It can be, it can be and, and we have to still keep going because... We were called by God mm -hmm. to accomplish a heavenly assignment. That's right. To bring the peace of heaven, the life of heaven, to the hearts of people that are hurting today. And so in this passage, I look at three things that Paul has in the strategy. Number one, he does not refrain from reaching his own people, which is the Jews, mm -hmm. about right. Jesus. Even though they have denied Christ as the Messiah, he still has a way of reaching them. Yes, he does. You know, so he refused to be discouraged because they rejected mm -hmm. the Messiah. And he has a way of winning and reaching them. And they're opening their hearts to him and listening to him. The key word in that passage, most of them say, that we will listen to you, mm -hmm. but we're also going to watch you. <laughs> yes, so okay. I already thought that some peop most people believe in only what we say. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I believe people watch us. They watch our lives. That's In other words, they say, we, we were gonna, we're going to watch the, the words you say if they align, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. with, with who you are, if you truly believe in God. And so he has to stay in this region for a long time to be seen by these people every day, going to the marketplace. You know, he's come out of the synagogue. Now he's in the marketplace. He's going to work. He's ma making things. And they watch him. They see a difference in his life. And I would understand this. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they saw Jesus in him. Yes. They saw compassion. They sh he, was, he was an everyday man to the people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sooner or later, as they watch him good enough, they said, we believe in this message that you have and at one point in in, in in this text they're fascinated they say we're gonna stop the entire business district right now we want to listen to you mm -hmm. what an opportunity yes. to having walked in a hostile city that at one point could not let you in and they say you know we're stopping the entire business <laughs> district we want to listen to what you have to say those words you bring to us that's amazing and i would have made paul if he had been discouraged before because he had been beat in another city mm -hmm. right now He's smiling. And the, and I think that the radio stations of that time, they say, did you hear that? <laughs> pa pa Apostle Paul uh, is in some city. He's, he's having the entire business district locked down and he's speaking. Yes. And, and his message of reconciliation does not only attract the business people, it attracts even the business leaders, mm -hmm. the leaders of the city. What an opportunity that God gives us when we keep going and serving him that he, he opens the door. Yes, he does. And when he opens the door, something happens that the opportunity is given out. The message that brings us together to God is given that transforms the lives of the people. And like I said in the past you know, phase, is that I, I want to see results. We all want to see results. And for Peter, I mean for Paul, you find out something happens in, the, in this journey. Mm -hmm. That he is able to win these men that are listed in 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 this passage yes. and these were the influences of 
anthems, the region, the business. Mm -hmm. You could not go, you could not be break through this city until you met this man. That's right. His boldness. And he's speaking to them about God. Mm -hmm. And he drops, he plants seed inside of them. And eventually history tells us mm -hmm. that some of them believed in God. Some of them who are pagan worshipers, who pulled in like 30,000 people to follow this pagan, pagan God. They were converted that to the extent even the pagan practices were never no more. Doesn't he mention that in the last couple of verses? He does mention that in the last couple mm -hmm. of verses that mm -hmm. some of these guys that were transformed were, act were able to change. Some of them mm -hmm. became the leading evangelists. You know, th there's one phrase in the name of Apergus. That guy became the leading evangelist of, the, of Arabia. Okay. Christianity lasted mm -hmm. 300 years in Arabia because of, because of him. Okay. Why? Because Paul reached him. Mm -hmm. What an opportunity. You know? Yeah, because Paul introduced him to the unknown God. To the unknown God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who happened to be Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, and so we live in a society today that, again, we have to reach and bring these people to the unknown God. The world's hungry and they're searching That's for the right. goodness of God. That's right. Sometimes we feel that we have not had the fruitfulness that we should have had in spreading the gospel when we're involved in ministry. What should we do to start afresh? Well, everything begins and ends with the one that commissioned us. Mm -hmm. And that's Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, I can give you an example of his disciples. Three years in ministry, they followed him. He's taught them several things on how to do ministry. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that he finds them and tells them, you're going to do this before they are qualified to do it. Yes. You know, the greatest danger is to have somebody do something and say, today, you are the manager of this company. Oh, no, I've never done it before. He said, I don't care. If you've never done it before, it can be done. Mm -hmm. You know, because God always brings us to the challenge of the calling yes. before we even feel we're able to do it. Why? Because when it's overwhelming to us, then we're desperate enough to ask him for help. That's a good point. You know, mm -hmm. and, so, and so in this is that when we are not able to do spread the gospel, know how to do it, our desperation begins to rise. Mm -hmm. And so right. we need him to give it, to help us. So look at his disciples. I mean, all of them, he's called them, he's been with them. You know, he has a few doubters, a few, you know, one of them is a, is a betrayer, and, you know, and he's hanging around with them. At times we saw that it was difficult for them to understand the concept. Like three times he, taught, he tested them with the ministry of food. Yes. The okay. one time he's asking them, we don't have food. What are we going to do? And they're scrambling for, let's do this. Let's send the people away. <laughs> yeah. He says, no, we've been with people, these people for a long time. Mm -hmm. We don't need to send them back. If you knew who you are, the, the test was, do you know mm -hmm. what God can do? Right. And all of us have gotten to a place when we don't know what we're going to do because we don't have enough resources. We don't have things to work with. And God says, now right in the middle of that, mm -hmm. don't quit. Just ask me for what I can. I need to do, you know. Because once we ask of Him, He is the f the author and the finisher. That's right. He began this good mm -hmm. work in us, and and Pastor, thank you for asking that question because we we've been in the time where people are getting discouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, the discouragement of ministry, and I'm saying no. It is it's an excitement. Yes. And this excitement doesn't come when we have good numbers in the bank account, you know, or several checks have been written. The excitement is that the gospel of light, of this gospel of reconciliation is way powerful. Yeah. God will take care of his work and will do everything, well you know. I appreciate that because that's so true. And we do forget the reality of who it is that we worship. Exactly. <laughs> and so the picture here I see, Pastor, if I interject, is, is that... After crucifixion, his disciples went back fishing. I think that's the first step mm -hmm. you did. Compassion. You would think that if you walk with God, three, this guy's tr three years and a half, mm -hmm. they finally got it. You get in trouble. They walk away. And you're so compassionate enough to go back and pick him. That's true. Yeah. That shows us the ministry of Jesus. <laughs> it sure does. And he says, okay. Yeah. He picks them up, calls them up, and says, we're we still going to do what we say we're going <laughs> to do. Right. No <laughs> running away from this. <laughs> and on yeah. Pentecost, the Bible tells us they're the same guys who are now changing the city. <laughs> they finally figured it. Yes, the, you know, <laughs> it, is, it is so true that Jesus is so compassionate to so never give up on us. And, and his ministry <laughs> yeah. of compassion and love. Mm -hmm. 
is what brings us back to what we are called to do. That is so true. Well, you've mentioned that the church does better when it's on the edge. Why do desperation and faith go hand in hand? That's the question that I've been asked in many (laughs) settings today Uh because of the way we see the shift of our world. And we feel that t- today that we are, the church is on the edge. Somebody told me that church on the edge because this is happening, that's happening. You know, they name pretty much a lot of stuff. And my first answer was this. I was, I'm looking at this from a different perspective. Mm. I am looking at it. If, if I look at things the way they are, I'm going to be discouraged. Yeah. And I probably will close my, you know, I pack my bags and go <laughs> back to Uganda right now. You know, yeah. but... Okay. Regardless of what I see, somebody said, Pastor Tom, he says, when you change how you see a thing, the thing you see changes. Uh, yes, it does. You know? Well put. Well and, put. And, 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 so, and so what happens here is this, that we are, we are, we are to be the people that see the opportunity mm-hmm. of ministry, even in the darkest hour. Yes. Because scripture's already shown us Mm-hmm. That the Bible say the Bible tells us in the book of Acts somewhere that and there was persecution and all of them were scattered in different places, mm-hmm. but true. wherever they were scattered, the gospel was, was preached. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Just about the, when they were on the, the age of the, of the fire. Were yes, spread, yeah. and at mm-hmm. one place the Bible say they prayed and the place was shaken, mm-hmm. but their prayer was, "Give us more power that we might become great witnesses." Mm-hmm. To the resurrection <laughs> of Jesus. You would think that after they've been persecuted, they'll say, you know what? We hung in. We're tired of it. <laughs> but they're asking for more power. Mm. So when we are on the age, there's something. Because when some, somebody pushes you right in the corner yes. on the wall, yes. you have nowhere to go back. Mm-hmm. That's a good, then you have to push point, forward. Yeah. You've been yeah. pushed so far. You push back. <laughs> and I think we're going to be excited about how we're going to do ministry in this time. Mm-hmm. More than never before. We've been comfortable enough. Yeah, that's right. And now we can do ministry mm-hmm. in comfort zones. We need to awaken again. Yeah. And let's see revival and awakening in our towns, in our cities, and actually in this nation and the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Yes, and I, I, I believe that this is the time. This is the time. Yeah. Well, how do we go to the place of power in the marketplace, as you were talking about in Acts 17, to change the climate of the city? Well, Again, it goes back to the picture of what we talked about, Paul, is that he understood today on a regular basis, I tell there are two segments we look at. On a Sunday, all of us preach in our Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. So our Sunday service, that's our Jerusalem. That's when our religious settings are. Right. After church service on Monday in the Western society, work is every day. People, people go to work. Mm-hmm. That is, I call that the Babylon. That's a different system. Okay. You know? We know how to have our services on Sunday, but we send these people back into a different system, a that's, work ethic system. True. Mm-hmm. And when they go back, we send them with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now, how many times have you passed it so, for so many years? You, you've had people excited on Sunday, but on Monday you're getting phone calls. Pastor, I need prayer. <laughs> yes. You know, my boss is this, and this mm-hmm. has happened. They're mm-hmm. discouraged because they don't, we don't prepare them to survive the hostile environment Mm -hmm. that's not like the environment in the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. So once we prepare them for the hostile environment, maybe it's the boss, maybe it's the co-workers, maybe it's the friends, they go there with the light. They realize that, oh, it's not just enough for us to have a Sunday service here. We're going to take this light to the environment. We're going to take it home. We're going to take it in our communities. We're going to take it Mm -hmm. to the workplace. We're going to relate. We're going to be loving. We're going to be, you know, sometimes things may not turn out the way we want, but actually we're the one with the light of Jesus mm-hmm. that we can ep- penetrate the marketplace. And, and if we have an ability to share Jesus with our friends mm-hmm. through relationship, actually, yes. it works. You know, I think we bring transformation. And so in the marketplace, there comes an opportunity for us to realize that what the empowerment that we give to the people on a Sunday, which is joy in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. We, we spread it every... The kingdom of God is not just on a weekend or midweek. <laughs> the kingdom of God is every day. Yes, it is. We experience that every day. 24-7. 24-7. <laughs> That's right. Well, the United States needs a revival, and you've uh, mentioned that already, but 
And you know that because you come from Uganda, where you have experienced a revival, how do we do that here as the body of Jesus Christ? Yes. I have two, three, four answers to, for, to that, maybe two, because of time. Mm -hmm. um, one is, again, to conclude on what the next wave of awakening in this nation is going to start in the marketplace. God's awakening God, his people in the church to see that the lost are in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Yes, We meet them every day. We associate with them. Some of them are friends. They need Jesus in the desperate times we're in mm -hmm. right now. That's right. And why do I say that we need an awakening or a revival in the marketplace? It's the, it's the place that has not been affected by the presence of God mm -hmm. for a largely great amount of time. Yes. And that's the place that God is awakening. He wants the church to serve the city. Yes. He wants the church to bring reconciliation mm -hmm. in the city. He wants us to get out of the four walls and go and win the city without saying, you know what, what about if they get us contaminated? The days of them getting us contaminated were a long time ago. Yes. Right now, love is the one that contaminates. Love is the one that grabs sinners and mm -hmm. brings them to the cross mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. So as you ask, the United States needs a revival. America needs a revival. I think I shared with you mm -hmm. about the new documentary we have out, you know, that talks really the four steps for America getting a revival. Number one, we have to bring back prayer altars in every home. Mm -hmm. Think of it, you know, in, in Ballaston or, you know, Fort Worth or the other cities, when we have Christian families saying we're going to be a house of prayer. Right. If you have houses of prayer, mm -hmm. families of prayer, That's right. you have churches of prayer. Mm -hmm. If you have churches of prayer, that city is ready to be invaded by a move of God. Amen. That's if we right. blanket our cities with love and reconciliation, mm -hmm. we understand that America is ready for a move of God. Change the home. Invite God in, back mm -hmm, in again. Mm -hmm. You invite God in the church. And we have a tender heart then. Yes. Mm -hmm. God, you know, we have a tender heart. And if the church is a praying church, mm -hmm. we're able to understand Father's heart for the city. Yes. Because the first thing that happens when we pray, what does he give us? He gives us compassion. Mm -hmm. He gives us love. Right. So we're able to bring them in with the spirit of reconciliation. You know, today people are ready for us. Every time they see Christians, they want to walk, run away from us because the first thing they know, we're going to tell them, Jesus is going to kill you. You're going to hell. All these kind of things we say. Mm -hmm. I said, but when we pray, the first thing is not judgment. That's right. The first thing is love. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that not any should what? Should perish. Perish doesn't come first. <laughs> love comes first. That's right. And that's what God wants us to release mm -hmm. in all our spheres of influence. And, and so working with you for eight years, I've watched you. Love people. I've watched you bless people. I've watched you, you know, being around pastors and, and bringing people together. I've watched your ministry for almost these nine years mm -hmm. being a blessing to this region. Mm -hmm. And God's asking you to continue that. I know sometimes you've been through hard when, you know, you know, people didn't understand what you're about. But that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It comes with that difficulty. If it was easy, anybody could do it. And you're doing well <laughs> doing it because the mission is not impossible. Well, with God's grace and his love, that's right. And we certainly need that love expressed to us all the time by yes. him. Yes, yes. Well, again, how do prayer and reconciliation work effectively in the body of Christ to produce the needed excitement to share the gospel and the love of Jesus? We, we have to come back to the picture of the cross. Mm -hmm. It is a picture of love. It is... It is the picture, and I said that before, once we're able to see this love experience that Christ has given to us. You know, somebody said, you cannot give what you don't have. And what that means is this, is that we can give people love that we know Christ has given to us. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, Christ has loved us, so we're able to mm, love that's right and so in the body of christ which is the premise and the foundation of which we are today our churches are in existence our walk mm. with him in existence of 
this great love, you know, without actually having even a debate if God loves us or not, He just does love us. Yes, He does. He He, if He His He pours His compassion on us. Mm -hmm. He weeps over us. He cries over us. He longs for us. He pursues us. He's given His Son for us. He forgives us. And when we understand that, just one element that has to get out of the house, judgment, mm -hmm. self-judgment. Yes. I've, I've seen, and you've seen that in ministry, where people walk in with self-judgment. Mm -hmm. Say, God does not love me. And we, every time there's self-judgment, there's less giving mm -hmm. of, of this love. You know, every time judgment walks out of the house, there's mm -hmm. freedom and there's life mm -hmm. and life abundancy. And it's easy for somebody to say, Wow, I feel something that God has given to me. And when we see other people that don't look alike don't, and don't even go to church, at least, we're able to stop them and say, do you know that Jesus loves you? <laughs> That's right. There would be an excitement. Every time you know, we are excited in our church, there, there's an excitement in the body when we align ourselves to the truth that's not actually new. It's been there with us. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus prays for us that we be one, that when we are one, That's right. the world would know that we are his mm -hmm. disciples. What a yes. good picture. Yes. Heaven prays that we finally figure that out. <laughs> we, can, we can try so many methods, mm -hmm. but the one method that has won this world, that has shifted, that has wrestled with, with the predators, that has tried to bring paganism mm -hmm. in the whole world, has been love. Yes. And love is one. That's why if we're one, we're in that love. We're in yeah, it. Yeah. You know, the Song of Songs describes God, Jesus, pursuing us. Yes. Because he loves us as he much loves as he us. does. And we don't tend to look at that particular book of the Bible very often because it's said in poetic terminology and we, uh, we seem to not think it's a, of that importance. Right. But really, it, it is a love letter to us. It is. Definitely, Christians. it is. And so, um, when you have love, then uh, prayer and reconciliation do go hand in hand because that's the full expression of who God is in our lives today. Exactly. Well, that is uh, really encouraging news, and I certainly thank you for your insights and thank perspective you. on that. Yes. Um, Brother Mike, it has been awesome, uh, the time we've been able to spend with each other these past couple of weeks, sharing the gospel on this radio station. Yes. The gospel of Jesus Christ that he's given to all of us, and he wants all people to believe to that believe. what he has given to us is uh, life and yes. truth. Yes, yes. So on behalf of our listening audience, I thank you for coming and sharing with us. And we'll look forward to perhaps another time in the future when we'll be able to get together again. Amen. Would you please uh, lead us in prayer today? Father, once again, we thank you for the ministry of reconciliation. We thank you, Lord, for the love that you poured out towards us. You long for us. You pursue us. You love us. Mm, yes. That's a blessing. And Lord, all we have to do is accept what you're giving to us. Because you're rich in mercy. And even this hour, we pray for every listener, every man and woman of God. Probably, maybe they've been discouraged. They could not go on. Like Paul, we will go on in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus. Amen. And through your love, through your grace, we thank you that this is the most exciting time to serve you. Because we have an opportunity to reach the unreached and show them your love, you. Mm -hmm. Because you're King and Lord of our lives. We thank you for the next coming bro weeks of broadcast. For those of them that are listening, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for listening to the program this week. Hopefully it has been of value to you. If you have any questions about today's program or if you have other responses concerning this broadcast, you can either mail them, go to our website, our YouTube page, or our Facebook page. Please mail any questions or other responses concerning this broadcast to A Time to Reconcile, Post Office Box 2502, Burleson, Texas 76097. Also, you can go to our website at www. 
a time to reconcile.net and leave a comment there or go to our YouTube page or our Facebook page at youtube.com backslash a time to reconcile or facebook.com backslash a time to reconcile. I want to thank our sponsors who've made this broadcast possible. Again, thank you for tuning into the program today. May God richly bless you.